All right, as everyone starts making their way in, I'm about to introduce to the stage Mo Dong from uh, Seller Network. I actually had the privilege of winning a bounty at ETH Denver with Seller. And um, Mo Dong has actually indirectly paid for my rent last month. Um, so I'd like to welcome on stage Mo Dong. A round of applause, please. He's going to talk about building and operating internet scale dApps on the Seller Network. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Mo from Seller. And today, my, I'm going to talk about towards building and operating internet scale decentralized applications on top of a Seller network. So uh, this is going to be a short talk. So what I'm, I'm going to uh, touch base on is, uh, first of all, a very quick introduction about Seller te network technology and also a user product that we released called Seller X. And then I'm going to talk about uh, you know, uh, the testnet runs that we did during the last uh, six months. And based on the data we gathered and uh, the uh, user behaviors we observed during this entire testnet process, we will talk about why developers should actually care about building on top of Seller, and also some very valuable lessons we think uh, we learned from running this uh, world's largest uh, scale generalized uh, state channel and layer two off-chain scaling network. And finally, I'm going to briefly touch base on you know, what's next for Seller. So what is Seller Network? Seller Network is this layer two uh, scaling architecture that is like, a, you know, I, I bet everyone knows sort of like what layer two is. But Seller Network is a proposing a coherent off-chain scaling architecture here with both a technology stack and also a crypto economic stack on layer two. So on the technology front, uh, we proposed actually a layered structure here with the lowest layer called C channel, which is solving the problem to support generalized uh, off-chain scaling for not only just the payment, but also arbitrary smart contract. And in the middle, we have C route because the Seller network underlaying is always running and operating a generalized off-chain payment network. And the C route's job is to make the uh, you know, value transfer extremely efficient and in fact, provably optimal. And then on very top is basically our SDK and the user facing layer called COS. And uh, you know, um, this, this layer manifests itself uh, in terms of Seller X, the application that we built. And besides the uh, uh, technology architecture, we also proposed that the first layer two crypto economic constructor called C Economy, with the three part one is called the proof of liquidity commitment mining and the liquidity backing auction. These two parts combined actually solve the liquidity shortage problem faced by a lot of state channel networks and layer two scaling structures. And the state guardian network is proposed to solve the uh, so called watchtower problem in an efficient and, uh, you know, uh, uh, a reliable way using a sidechain constructor with the same spirit of Plasma. So uh, I, I wouldn't have time to dig into details about each of this aspect, but many of this stuff is are, uh, already available online, especially on the crypto economic side. If you check on the Seller Network's YouTube channel, uh, there is a, a narrated uh, uh, talk about this uh, uh, part uh, in pretty detail. So we actually released some uh, dev developer tools already. We have iOS, Android, and also Web SDK. Um, during the past few months, so we've been in a different hacks on and also collaborating with de uh, developers to build games, micropayment services, layer two device like layer two prediction market. And also messengers are integrating with like payment method, uh, uh, micropayment and instant payment like one team in East Denver actually built a uh, micropayment uh, solution uh, in by integrating Seller with Telegram. So based on the SDK, based on the mobile SDK, we actually released something called Seller X on our testnet. Um, the Seller X is really a user-facing access point to Seller network for the user to use Seller and use the application built on top of Seller. So it allows users to interact instantly with each other on blockchain. Um, it, uh, it, will pro uh, it will bring a lot of things uh, for users to play around. And finally, the core uh, you know, value proposal for the user is always you can spend less and win more and earn more in the, on the blockchain. So this is just kind of like a quick demo of Seller X that we I uh, just recorded last night. Uh, so it looks like a wallet, but the difference here is that you have the blockchain section and then you have the Seller Pay section. Well, the Seller Pay section is really your off-chain balance or layer two balance here. Now, what, what I'm doing now is like just sending an off-chain transaction. Now, 
just like that, the off-chain transaction is done. It's instant final, um, you know, um, and uh, the token we use is actually ERC20 token generated on Robson, and uh, you, you can replace that with any kind of a stable token of your choice when we launch on midnight. Now, what's happening here is that actually, like, we're trying to play a state channel game with each other where one guy stake, let's say, $1, and the other guy also, like, uh, choose to stake $1, and they created a, basically a game. And uh, when they join the game, what's, what actually happened on the lane is that uh, both of them send each other off-chain a conditional payment. Like, think about uh, Lightning is basically sending an unconditional payment off-chain, but what Seller can do is that Seller can send you conditional payment based on, uh, condition on, like, uh, this game's result. Now, what is this game? This game is also fully running in a off-chain state channel. Like this is a generalized state channel in action, right? So you can see, you can already kind of see um, the Seller Network's interactiveness is already proven by this kind of a very short demo that you can actually play the chess game extremely efficiently and uh, uh, interactively uh, on blockchain. So during the past six months, we released the two test net, uh, one called Centauri. We released uh, around October. Um, on uh, 2018, and uh, the other is series. So we have a huge amount of uh, uh, you know features already supported, including multi-node, non-custodian, pay uh, generalized payment networks. We support both e e ETH and ERC20. We support generalized uh, state channel. We support functional and imperative state channel uh, contract interfaces, uh, off-chain, on-chain message uh, uh, state protocols. We actually wrote a Solidity protobuf parser uh, to realize this kind of things, and the list goes on. But the important question to ask is why should any of you care? Right? So like Ceres has all these features, why should any of you care? Well, this is why you should care. Uh, from day one to day 172, we grow the user from the first month's, uh, monthly active user on the testnet from 310 to 18,000, uh, you know, just in the beginning of April. So. Uh, this is a 56 uh, growth in five months, and we believe that we are operating the largest generalized state channel network in the world right now. Uh, I don't think there is any debate in that. So the users are from 67 different countries, uh, as we can see from our backend databases. And interestingly, uh, you, you know, if we look at Madagascar, uh, the Madagascar actually have a very high active user to population ratio. So maybe we will like, like host a meetup there someday. So it's not only about the user and the geolocations of this application of the rich, but uh, you know we all we also are seeing extremely encouraging um, you know product market fit or um, you know growth matrix that makes we think that certain natural technology actually can fix many critical pinpoint of today's decentralized application like low retention, uh, you know hard to get on board and all that stuff. So, for example, uh, it's not like, uh, you know, this 18,000 users just come to a certain network on board and then never comes back. They actually, on average, play 10 games monthly, and we have about 4 million transactions processed on the test network monthly. And uh, for every active user per day, they spend about 12 minutes, um, you know, uh, on their daily user engagement time. Even for traditional application, traditional mobile application, this is already a pretty pretty high number, and we already achieved a 20% day seven retention ratio. So if you look at the conversion, look at the retention, look at the stickiness, it resembles not a decentralized application, it resembles a centralized application, and I think that's where we are uh, trying to go as a community. So it's also critical to note that this is just one application on a paper money testnet, and we believe with this kind of a smooth interaction enabled by Seller and this extremely high transaction volume involved in Seller Network, it is extremely easy to create a very sustainable monetization path for developers on Seller Network. And that is, I think, uh, why you know, I would suggest you to uh, keep an eye on us as we grow mature, uh, more and more mature in terms of the SDK and developer documentation and everything. Of course, uh, not everything is like awesome and flowery. Um, there are also interesting lessons learned during the process. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just gonna touch on some important points, uh, or interesting point, rather. So this is a, the same graph that plotted in logarithmic uh, uh, scale. 
Uh, there are some key events that drive the growth. So the first one is like East San Francisco, we launched the stuff, and then we launched it on like a Chinese community. Uh, so you can see there's another bump. And then we did like a Christmas uh, tournament, and you can see another small bump here. And then we released the Stellar X, which is like the application you can download today. And then we have East Denver, um, this, the growth uh, kind of a sustained. And then, you know, the most recent jump is because we launched on Binance Launchpad. Um, so the, the message goes out and then, you know, the user just jumped. So at each stage, there are all some very interesting stuff. Uh, but I'm going to like focus on several of them. So the first part. Uh, notice this drop here. Like, you know, kind of a, we released the, the WeChat, uh, uh, you know, message or like kind of a WeChat small promotion uh, to tell user about Cetrax, and then suddenly it starts to drop. Well, so the lesson we learned there is that, uh, you know, I think it generally applies to every DApp that is, uh, um, you know, it's kind of a, a hard to do a global reliable event monitoring. In the beginning, we rely heavily on Infura. So, uh, you know, we thought, okay, this is probably fine. We deployed the application also on chi in China. And uh, then, like, uh, you know, because we opened the channel and uh, there is some event emitted in the channel opening call, and the, the mobile application will catch that channel opening call. Uh, in the beginning, it works okay, but because Infura was hosted in, uh, you know, uh, AWS and also used this kind of TCP connection and the uh, WebSocket stuff, it, it looks very much like a VPN, basically. Uh, so, you know, we are starting to see very, very interesting connectivity issues coming from China, and at one point, entire China went black. So basically, we, we grow the user, we return it back. So that's just a kind of a hard lesson we learned, and we did something uh, to alleviate and uh, you know, counteract that. Um, another thing that, that is kind of interesting is uh, this, this kind of a weird uh, shape thing. So uh, what happened there is that uh, we all like talk about theoretically, you could have this uh, scenario where like kind of a, uh, you have a lot of state channel, and all of the state channel want, want to settle all at once. And then there are some like people just cannot like settle the channel properly and all that stuff. Uh, this is what people call the settlement storm. Um, this thing actually happened to us, not because of a malicious user, but because of a fault in our software. So during the upgrade process uh, from the previous uh, version of testnet to the new version of testnet, there was a backward compatibility issue we didn't catch. So. Every uh, you know, old version of the app is actually trying to settle the channel with a you know, older or malicious uh, uh, you know, state proof. So we kind of self-created the attack to the network ourselves. Um, but the problem about this is, uh, you know, um, at the time, we, even though we did some, uh, uh, even though we did some like, uh, mitigation effort uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, prevent this, our uh, off-chain service provider, or like the hubs, actually reacted correctly and trying to resettle the channel in a correct sense. But because like the block was totally congested during a small period of time, and because it's a test net, we set a very small amount of a timeout uh, for the settlement. Um, it become actually kind of a trigger this kind of a settlement storm. Uh, so the lesson we learned there is that we really need an on-chain oracle to tell us whether uh, several blocks like before this is actually congested or not. So, uh, you know, in the production launch, we'll incorporate the such oracle, but we would hope to have layer one support some primitive to tell us this stuff is happening, the blocks are congested, so, you know, be careful about this stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, we, of course, like after the Binance Launchpad, uh, you know, um, announcement, we see a channel creation storm, literally like thousands of people trying to open state channel at the same time with our option service providers. Uh, it created like a, a big issue in terms of event monitoring because the event monitoring and the TCP connection does have timeout and your phone does, it's not like actually very reliable. It's come, uh, become like an, another event monitoring uh, you know, issue. And um, uh, that also caused us to turn away a lot of users because users are actually confused about oh, what's going on, why cannot uh, you know, get onto a setter. So we didn't prevent user or tell user what's happening up front, and that kind of uh, bite us. We actually, like uh, uh, the highest rate we turn, uh, turn, uh, turn away the user was like more than 50% user we turn away actually. So now let's uh, finish thing talking about some technical stuff. Let's talk about the UX. So these are the UX comments we, uh, we gather from East Denver. Um, you know, uh, really nice to use, a great layer to experience, play the game all night, and all that stuff. Setter's UX is awesome. 
Well, not until I start to push this stuff to the more general public. And then I realized this is kind of a, we're living in a bubble situation. So, um, so because East Denver's uh, uh, crowd is actually very uh, interesting crowd in the sense that it, um, you know, everyone knows what layer two is and everyone kind of expect what to have using layer two. But when we launched this stuff on the Binance Launchpad and let everyone know about this stuff, people were just generally curious about the blockchain and start to download, et cetera, and start to try to use this stuff. And then we realized layer two UX is actually a trickier than layer one UX. Uh, some top questions we received from the users. Uh, the, the biggest the question, like the, the most frequent last question is probably the first one. Is Setter just a centralized server holding my money like it's exchange? Uh, the reason that they ask this question is extremely legitimate because there is always this process to separate the on-chain balance and the off-chain balance. Right? So you always have like a, your on-chain balance that users sort of already understand that is decentralized, that is safe, that is in his control. But once somehow, you, you, if you want to accelerate and use the application built on top of Setter, you need to move your on-chain balances from your on-chain wallet to this off-chain world. This moving process feels like a deposit because you're also sending this stuff uh, you know, via transaction. So it takes a lot of explanation to tell you that this is actually not what's happening. Um, but still, like uh, we're kind of also still struggling with that and trying to come up with uh, uh, good analogies or good ways to explain that to the user. And uh, there are things like, okay, I joined the setter, but I cannot send money to my friend who didn't join the setter. What's going on? And uh, you know, there are a question like, where did money? Uh, why did my, my, my money got stuck when the uh, player I'm playing with just left the game? Well, uh, you know, because of the uh, on-chain settlement and the layer two, you know, settlement process, uh, even if no one is kind of, a, you know, disputing in this process, it still takes a time out to let the off-chain pending conditional payment resolve back to a unconditional non-payment. And these kind of stuff, we need to explain to the user who does not even fully understand layer, two, layer one, not even to say about layer two. So, uh, you know, the, I probably don't have time, so I just want to briefly touch on what's next for Setter. So for Setter, we are thinking about moving forward uh, towards a coherent layer two platform that actually utilizes different technology pieces, not only just the state channel, but we actually in the state guardian network are already using, uh, you know, plasma-like sidechains. Um, and also we think that, you know, the boundary between sidechain and state channel may not be that strict, uh, but th that's what we're going, like we're using, utilizing different technology pieces with a mass adoption ready UX. And when mainnet, uh, Mainland is coming in Q2 uh, 2019. And with all the experiences we gathered from the testnet runs, two testnet runs, uh, we, are, we just launched a new private uh, alpha for, uh, you know, to prepare for our Mainland launch today. Uh, so if you're interested, like scan this QR code or go to bit.ly um, slash alpha registration, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll invite you guys to the private alpha. Uh, so with that, uh, conclude my talk. Um, thank you.